Looks like tonight Sky is ready Feels like the wind Gone to change Beneath my feet Earth is ready I know it's time For heaven's rain It's gone Welcome in the name of Jesus, High Priest of our hearts. I am Lily Ledke. I worship here at Aldersgate United Methodist Church and I'm connecting with you from Aldersgate Church Sanctuary in Bellevue, Washington. I am happy and grateful you are with us. All are welcome here. Please say hello in the comments. God of the morning is with us as we gather with songs of praise. Please join me. Here we find respite from a busy, frenetic world. We gather in this place finding the peace that God offers. We are more at home within ourselves when we find our rest in Christ. We are witnesses to God's glory, steadfast love, and faithfulness. We see the beauty of creation and sing praises of joy. We abide in God's love and keep God's commandments. Today, we awaken to the call and show up fully to love one another. Come, let us worship. Let us pray. God of light and life, we gather as witnesses to your abundant love. We are amazed to discover you anew through our prayers, 
our praise, and our offerings. God, you encourage us amidst our daily living to become stewards of your love and grace. We ask you to be here with us as we witness your love made real through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm Vince Fratello, bringing you the children's moment and a few other things this morning while Pastor Juan G. takes some time off. In honor of Earth Week, I would sing Happy Earth Day to you, but it's not quite Earth Day and I can't sing. It is a wonderful day to think about things growing, so I went out and got a packet of seeds. I like herbs for cooking, so this is cilantro which gets used a lot in Chinese and Mexican cooking. I took a flower pot and some potting soil. I put a few seeds in and watered them, then put the pot in the sun's love. Now I am waiting. You could go out today and get a packet of seeds and try to grow something you enjoy. Doing good deeds in the world is sometimes like that. We try to be kind every day and do the right thing. Not every seed we plant will come up, but if we plant enough seeds and with God's love, we will see a crop of kindness and love come back to us. But you know when it is best of all? When we plant our seeds just for the love of it and don't expect anything at all. Then one day something good happens because of what we did and we know it was all worthwhile. Will you pray with me? God, let us be your sowers of seeds of kindness in the world. Help us to see the needs of others and to do our best to help. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord, let your face shine Shine
shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Hear my prayer. Dear God, every week we celebrate your creation. But this week especially, we pray for all your creation. We pray for the greatest and the least, the lovely and the unlovely, for sunny days and rain, for every season and every good purpose under heaven, because they are all part of your plan. We thank you for the opportunity to live in this beautiful place where every day we are deeply in contact with life. We ask that you help us become better stewards of all you have given us. Keep us close as we follow the prayer your Son gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm Joe Lee, connecting with you from the sanctuary at Aldersgate Church. Draw near and hear the word from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. I am reading from the Inclusive Bible. Send out your bread upon the waters, for after many days you will get it back. Divide your means seven ways, or even eight, for you do not know what disaster may happen on earth. When clouds are full, they empty rain on the earth, whether a tree falls to the south or to the north. In the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. Whoever observes the wind will not sow, and whoever regards the clouds will not reap. Just as you do not know how the breath comes to the bones in the mother's womb, so you do not know the work of God, who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening do not let your hands be idle, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. When I was young, I was in Boy Scouts, and as Boy Scouts are wont to do, we did many service projects. Living on the Oregon coast, where logging was a major industry, we were often called upon to aid with reforestation efforts. We would go out with a truckload of seedlings and specialized mattocks to replant areas that had been clear-cut. There was a formula for how far apart the seedlings were supposed to be, and we would do our best to lay out a grid, often in the rain, because it was, you know, the Oregon coast and kind of a rainforest. That was over 50 years ago. And some of those reforestation projects should be ready to be harvested again. But if you look at those mature forests, you will see far fewer trees than our original grid pattern. Some might never have taken root properly. Some might have succumbed to the disease. Some might have been overshadowed by their neighbors. 
The parable of the sowers tells us about how seeds might not come to fruition. Some might fall on the path and be eaten by birds. Some might land on rocky ground where there was not enough depth of soil, so the seedlings were scorched and withered. Others were choked off by thorns. But you know, we were not like the sowers, scattering the seed a bit willy-nilly. All the seedlings we planted were on good soil. Why did only some yield thirty and sixty and a hundredfold? The reality is we could not know which would fail and which would succeed. So we needed to plant each seedling with care because that might be the one that would become a great tree and yield lumber for houses, pulp for paper, enough maybe that some old growth forest did not have to be cut down and could be preserved for wildlife in future generations. I don't think God picks winners and losers in life. There is a lot that determines which seedlings flourish and which fail. But as we go out into the world, we can help seed with care and let life be what it will be. As it says in today's scripture, in the morning sow your seed, and at evening do not let your hands be idle, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. I am part of the international crystal growth community. One of my friends from that community is a Russian Jew who emigrated first to Israel and then to the United States. One day Dan introduced me to a colleague and said, this is the best guy in the world. And I looked at him like, what are you talking about? When Dan was a grad student in Israel, he had applied for financial aid to attend a crystal growth conference in Colorado. I was the conference treasurer and it had landed on my desk, so I processed it along with maybe a dozen others. I made up a list of what we could do, got approval from the conference chairs, and sent out letters that we could offer a registration waiver, waiver and so much travel support to be collected at the desk upon registration. Dan's life up until then had led him to be skeptical of bureaucracies. So he approached the registration desk with some trepidation, fearing he might get nothing and be effectively impoverished. But he received his registration wa waiver, I wrote him a check, and he left with a bit of a sense of wonderment. I don't even remember doing it. I was just doing my job. When I worked at Bell Labs, there was a group of us who had lunch together most days and went out for Chinese food once a week. In good weather, we would go for a walk after eating, and of course, we got to be pretty good friends and share a lot with each other. In one of the reorganizations, Mike got transferred out to a Pennsylvania location. I went there sometimes for work and visited him in his lab and had lunch a time or two. One time, I went out for a bunch of meetings that were going to keep me up tied, all, tied up all day. But I saw Mike in the hall and went to shake his hand. He blew by me like I wasn't there and he never spoke to me again. To this day, I have no idea why. Two people, two relationships, two different outcomes, and in both cases, I was unknowing. What could I have done? How could I have invested more that would have maintained my relationship with Mike? Whether a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where that tree falls, there it will lie. Every day we interact with people in a variety of ways, some deep and some casual. How can we do that better? Smiling at the grocery clerk at the supermarket, meeting the gaze of someone on the street, the touch of your hand on a loved one's shoulder, cooking a meal for a sick friend, seeing the real person in every individual that you meet, not just their role in your life, each of us is a living embodiment of God's love. How have we delivered that love today? To the unloved, the unrecognized, the disenfranchised. You never know when it will matter. Just as you do not know how the breath comes into the bones in the mother's womb, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. Christians and Jews are sometimes referred to as people of the book. 
There is no doubt that the word of God is central to our beliefs. The words of Jesus carry down to us through the ages, providing a lodestone to our lives. But we know that the Gospels were not written down until 30 to 80 years after Jesus' death, almost certainly by individuals who did not directly witness his ministry. So in addition to the written word, oral tradition has been a part of Christianity, and in fact, all of humanity's search for meaning. Very few early Christians would have been literate, so sharing of stories and preaching became central to worship, as they are to this day. It is a rare service that does not include a scripture reading and a message. We have the word come down to us through the ages from Paul, Martin Luther, John Wesley, and yes, Pastor Wan Ji, among millions of others who preach and write the word every day. As followers of the teachings of Jesus, our words matter too. Those who are parents have had the experience of hearing your words come out of your children's mouths, and it conditions you to speaking the right words, and hopefully those are the ones that get remembered. But are there days when we rely too much on the word? Ralph Waldo Emerson tells us, don't say things. What you are stands over you the while and thunders so that I cannot hear what you say. To the contrary. Are there days when we say too much and do too little? I've sometimes described myself as the world's worst evangelist. Oh, I can stand here and speak to you, my church family. I've even shared some of these sermons with other people of faith with whom I have meaningful dialogues about religion and spirituality. But if you were to ask me to bear unsolicited witness to a stranger or a group of strangers, I would totally clam up. However, I have been inspired by the words of Cory Booker. Before you speak to me about your religion, first show it to me and how you treat other people. Before you tell me how much you love your God, show me how much you love all his children. Before you preach to me of your passion for your faith, teach me about it through your compassion for your neighbors. In the end, I'm not as interested in what you have to tell or sell as I am in how you choose to live and give. Because I can do things. I can show my faith in how I behave every day. I can try to be a good example to my children so they not only say the right things, but do the right things. We must be doers and not simply observers. Whoever observes the wind will not sow, and whoever regards the clouds will not reap. Not long ago, Roger and I were having a conversation, and we agreed that the things we regretted most in life were times we were unkind. And you know, unkindness comes out most often in words, often simply in careless words. I've been doing email since 1981. I always proofread emails, posts, and texts before I send them out. But more recently, I've also started proofreading for kindness. Oh, I have long known that any email that begins with, you flaming idiot, should go straight to trash. But now, I look to see if I open and close with warm sentiments. Not fake words, but saying how I really feel and addressing the real person directly. Do I emphasize areas of agreement? First, if there is some necessity to disagree. Do I treat the recipient like a real human being? In this time of pandemic, kindness has become ever more critical. A while back, I felt the need to post something on Facebook about the importance of wearing masks. I saw there was considerable potential to get preachy. I certainly have Facebook friends from high school who are prone to listen to anti-mask rhetoric and I didn't want to push their buttons. So I decided to speak instead about why I wear a mask. I spoke first about how it fit with my faith and my love for others. Okay, sometimes I can evangelize a little bit. Then I spoke about how it fit with me being a scientist. 
I spent a long time editing it for content and kindness before I posted it. It wasn't the most liked per post I've ever done. That was the one about my neighbor warning me about the bear behind me as I was walking the dogs. But there weren't any naysayers either. About a day later, one of my high school friends wrote back privately. Jill said that she was moved by what I said and how I said it. And she thought about something she had said online the day before that, in retrospect, was kind of snarky. So she quietly deleted it. I was poleaxed. I had cast my bread upon the waters, and it had come back, not in the way I intended, but in a completely different and wonderful way. We think of the importance of big deeds in life. But what about the endless chain of small deeds that define our days? Did I do proper greetings and farewells with every person, knowing it might have an impact, and knowing it could even be the last? My cousin Joanne, she went by Joe, had been if not estranged, at least distant from the family for some time. But she'd moved to Washington a while back, and we reconnected. Joe came to our big annual pasta party two years ago, and we resolved to get together soon. But time got away, and then the pandemic. One day her daughter couldn't reach her and was concerned, so she went over to check. Joe had died quietly, sitting in her chair, holding her cell phone. I have a regret there of not following up. It made me think about trying to be more present. This is what I think I understand. To finish the Emerson quote, a lady of my acquaintance said, I don't care so much for what they say as I do for what makes them say it. When I speak, I want people to see me shining through. I want my actions to speak louder than my words. I want my words and deeds to be as godly as I can make them. I want to be more a doer than a preacher. I want to be less concerned with being thought of as a good person than being a good person. Because I don't know what word or action of mine will have a profound effect on another person or my relationship with them in a way I might never predict. I try not just to act on what I think will happen, but rather to open myself to what could happen. I plant trees where I can. Will it turn out like Dan or like Mike? I'm not going to get through life without some regrets, but I want to act to minimize them. So every day I send out my bread upon the waters, and after many days I get it back. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
deeper than with prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. Oh, grow up a really promised birch in yonder tree. In my garden I am as free as a feather. Someone warm them from below Till the rain comes tumbling down In your going forth, I would like to offer you the Irish blessing, which seems appropriate for Earth Week. May the road rise up to meet you, May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand.